evening of April 18th, 1775, the British had moved into old Boston. The plan was for them to cross the Charles River and sneak into, in the dead of the night, to sneak into Concord and Lexington. What were they after? Well, they were after a, a, a cache of weapons. And their plan would have succeeded, except one man was awake. Everyone else is asleep, but one man was still on watch. And that man's name was Paul Revere. And Paul Revere mounted his horse as he saw the British becoming or coming into the cities, into the town, ready to invade, ready to catch them off guard. And he mounted his horse and ran through village and through the streets um, of those cities and towns yelling, wake up, wake up, the British are coming. The British are coming. And so the houses begin to wake up and the men begin to get out of bed the men begin to, to get the sleep out of their eyes and put the clothes on and grab their weapons and they were made ready to go and defend their honor and defend their families and defend their community and defend this nation that was just being birthed. They're known as minute men. Why? Because they are ready in a minute. And I'm convinced today that our world needs some minute men, and some minute women, Men and women who are ready in a minute, ready in a minute to wake up, ready in a minute to put us all on call. We are in a spiritual warfare, my friends, and it is actually being made visible more and more as the days pass. It used to be kind of in the background not too long ago, but the, 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 the more the days pass, the more visible the spiritual war, warfare that we're in the midst of is being made visible. And today, I want to give us a wake-up call. Today, if I could, I'd love to serve as our Paul Revere of this moment, of this family, of this faith family, and say, wake up. Wake up, because I believe God wants to give us all, the church, a wake-up call. We've been in a series called Breaking Dormancy, and ultimately, what is it about? It's about waking up the church. We're breaking dormancy. We're wiping the sleep out of our eyes. We're learning to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're learning to, to be clothed in Christ, we're, we're learning all that is available to us as sons and daughters of the King. And we've been given the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as a helper, a comforter, a teacher, one who reveals all truth to us, one who convicts us of sin, one who gives us wisdom. He is the one who gives us power. He is the one that gives us the ability to glorify Jesus. And again, he is our seal and he is our deposit, our guarantee of our salvation. And hear me, God has given us everything we need to wake up as Christ's followers. God has given us everything we need as Christ's followers to not be nodding off. Y'all ever watch somebody <laughs> nod off? I see some of you out there. I love watching people nod off. Little kids are the best when they nod off. His eyes... Get heavy. You know when those kids get those nap jerks? That's some of us, spiritually speaking. Not enough. Some of us are straight napping. Middle of the day, napping. And don't get me wrong, I'm a pro napper. But spiritually speaking, it's time to wake up. Some of us are not just napping, we're... (laughs) 
I can snore. <laughs> Some of us are straight, snoring through life, spiritually speaking. And it's time to wake up. Not time to get woke. It's time to get awake. There's a big difference. Romans 13, the Apostle Paul gives the church a wake-up call. He gives the church a wake-up call. I said he gives the church a wake-up call. Not people that don't know Jesus, but people who know Jesus. Not people who haven't been saved, people who are saved. He gives them a wake-up call. And he gives us that same wake-up call today. Romans chapter 13, if you have your Bibles. If you don't, it'll be on the screen behind me. Romans chapter 13, again, back in verse 11. What has happened is, is Paul has just challenged the, the church in Rome, okay? Rome of all places. Y'all know how crazy Rome was? I mean, Rome was nuts. Rome was crazy. And in the middle of Rome and in the middle of the, the Roman Empire was a rising church, a, a church full of faith-filled believers. And yet, even though they were early on in their walk with Jesus, they had already gone back to some old patterns and they'd already gone uh, back to nodding off and taking naps and sleeping spiritually. And so Paul begins to kind of address them and, and he talks to them about first the importance in chapter 13 of understanding authority and, and that God has put authority over us and, and we gotta understand that. And he's like, you need to understand and respect all authority that's been put, placed over you. And then he goes on and goes, and let me talk to you about how to treat one another. You should love one another. And he goes down and you can just read it later on, but he goes and he just addresses how we are to treat one another and how to treat people, our neighbors, to love our neighbors, you know, as we love ourselves. And then we come to this in verse 11 and he says, besides this, okay? So in other words, including all of this, on top of all of this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than we first believe. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. And so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of life. The armor of light. We have anarchy in the world. America is in a moral free fall. Several years ago, I was living in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. At the time, I was a student pastor. I believe it was in 2002. A man by the name of Josh McDowell was living in Dallas, and he gathered around some of the student pastors across the nation and some of the leading voices in the next generation back then. And for some reason, he included me in this invitation, and I went to his house for a dinner and really for a wake-up call. And he presented to us a, a new book that he had just written called Beyond Belief to Conviction. If you know Josh McDowell, he is one of the leading apologetics of our day. And there in that dinner that night, he, Josh, forecasted a day in America when what was right would be seen and taught as wrong and what is wrong would be seen as taught as right. He, he forecasted a day when if you called what was, wrong, what was right wrong, you will be labeled as someone who has hate speech. And honestly, I remember sitting there as a student pastor going, Josh, you've lost your mind. It's not gonna happen that fast. I mean, I can see the moral slide, but Josh, we're a long way from that. I mean, this was my mindset. But here we are. And what Josh forecasted, we are now living in and what is right it's not just viewed as wrong but it's now being taught and what is wrong is being taught as right and if you're going to stand and tell the truth 
real quickly, you're gonna be labeled as a bigot, homophobic, xenophobic, all the other phobics they can name and label you. And ultimately, you're canceled. Just get canceled. We've got to cancel culture. We're living in an upside down world. We have anarchy happening in our world. Let me give you just an example of this, just one. You know what the leading cause of death was in 2020? Not suicide, not COVID, although that's what they want you to think. Not AIDS, not even cancer, abortion. 42 million, 675,372 babies aborted worldwide. 3,000 a day in America. 22% of all pregnancies in America in 2020 ended in abortion. And this is just one of many examples of the moral free fall we are in here in America. And I can go on and talk about the attack on the nuclear family, the attempt to emasculate men, gender blurring, critical race theory, and on and on and on and on. And I believe that God is saying to his church, wake up. Now hear me. He's saying it to his church. He's saying it to you. He's saying it to me. Wake up. Wake up. It's on your watch. It's in your time. It's in your stewardship. And we can no longer just say, oh, this is not touching my life and this is not my business. Friends, it's in your neighborhood. It's come to you. And it's come to me. And we can't keep responding with apathy. And there are two things today that I pray that the Holy Spirit writes on all of our hearts with this wake up call. And the first one is what I've said. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Talking to the church. I'm talking to those of us who call ourselves Christ followers. It's time to wake up. Paul says it. Besides, you know this. You know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. So for salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is too is far gone. The day is at hand. Paul says in verse 11, the hour is now. It has now come. Verse 12, the night is, is far gone. The day is at hand. Well, what Paul is saying is that like morning time is past, right? Morning time is past and you should be out of the bed by now. <laughs> Come on, you ever slept in really, really late? I'm talking about like 2 p.m. late. Morning has passed. The world has moved on and you're just waking up to get your cup of coffee. This is the condition that Paul is saying that the Romans are in. And this is the condition I think that many of us are in. Morning has passed and we're still in our bed clothes. We're still in, wrapped up in the sheets in our bed. Sleeping, snoring, <laughs> spiritually. It's late in the day. It's time for us to wake up. It makes no sense to be asleep at this time of the day. In this year, in this moment, in this day in America, it makes no sense, Christ followers, for you to be in bed sleeping. Wake up. James 4.4 4 says, hey, you don't know how long your life is anyway. It's what? It's but a vapor. So wake up. Jesus lived with an urgency spiritually. He says, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. 
We have a lot of opportunities in front of us. The greatest opportunity we have in front of us is soul winning. There's a lot of things you're gonna do in heaven. One thing you will not do in heaven is win souls. We are a soul winning people. We are a people who are placed on this planet to point people to the saving grace of Jesus. And it's time to wake up. Not wake up just to take a stand on what's right and wrong, yes. But to wake up, take a stand for what's right and wrong to point people to Jesus. There's a why behind our what. And his name is Jesus. And all of this that we're talking about, the first 12 minutes, 15 minutes of this message is just the front porch to get us into the house. Let's sort of walk through the house right now. Romans 13 and 11, again, the hour has come for you to wake from your sleep. I wonder what awakens you. Because you're awake at certain times and asleep at others. And you're awakened to certain things and asleep to others. I wonder what awakens you. What has your passion? What has your devotion? What has the energy of your day? What has your heart? What is it that you're running after in life? Is it, are they the things of God and the things of God's kingdom? Are they are things building our own kingdom? Protecting and earning and grabbing everything we can that's gonna rot anyway. What are we awakened to? What are we running after? We all have the same why in life. We're all put on this planet to know God and to make him known, to glorify God and to make him known. So what are you about? What are you awakened to? I don't know what I'm awakened to, Pace. That's a great question. What do you give your time to? And what's the driver behind your time? Where's your devotion? What breaks your heart? What makes you happy and what makes you sad? What makes you celebrate? What do you golf clap? And what do you go crazy over? It's time to wake up. It's it's time to, to wake up. One of the challenges that we face as Christ followers is that there's things in our lives that we should be awake to that we're asleep in and things that we should be asleep in that we're awakened to. We're asleep at the wrong time. We're like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you remember when Jesus said, stay awake, be on watch and pray? And each time, three times, Jesus went back and what did he find them doing? Sleeping. We're asleep at the wrong time. You see, they didn't understand the time. They didn't know the urgency of the moment. And let that not be said of you and let that not be said of me that we were asleep when we should have been awake. That we have a moment in history as Christ followers to make our mark, to draw lines in the sand to be both soldiers and ambassadors, to say, you will not cross this line. You may not have my family. You may not have my country. You may not have my heart. I will not sleep when I should be awake. Some of us are asleep at the wrong time. Some of us are asleep with the wrong person. Hello. We're like Samson who was guilty of disobeying God. God said, man, marry all, anyone you want. Stay away from those Philistine women. They haughty. (laughs) Time and time again, Bible says that Samson went over and he saw a woman and said, looks good to me. 
bring her on over. Ultimately, it ends up in a marriage with a woman named Delilah and not the Delilah on the radio. <laughs> Delilah. <laughs> and because he was a sleeping person, because he disobeyed God and he thought, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just, it's just another woman. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. It ended up taking the power that God had given Samson away from Samson. And it ended in his weakness and his disgrace. Some of us are asleep at the wrong time. Some of us are asleep with the wrong person. There are things that we're compromising in. We think, oh, it's not a big deal. There's grace for it anyway and it'll be to your disgrace, and it will be to your demise. And anything that God invites you to step away for or to step to, hey, listen, church, it's for our good. It's for our freedom. It's actually for our liberty. But we gotta be awakened to the things of God and be so awakened to what he wants for our lives that we prioritize them above all things, even when we don't feel like it and even when it doesn't make sense. I know that we have a lot of new believers here and everything inside of you is going, God, that makes no sense at all that you would have me say yes to this and no to that and it just makes my body says I want what you tell me not to want my, my what comes out of my mouth is not what's best for you and for me and everything's just a mess and I don't know what to do listen what you do is you decide you decide to wake up and you decide to say God I place myself under your authority your way not my way Help me through this. Give me your perspective. You know, there's some dangers of falling asleep. Some real dangers of falling asleep spiritually. When we are asleep spiritually, we miss opportunities that are right in front of us. Men of God, I wonder how many of you are missing opportunities with your sons. I wonder how many opportunities you're missing with your daughter. How many opportunities you're missing with your wife, with your family? I wonder how many opportunities we're missing to make a difference in our workplace. I wonder how many opportunities we're missing to, to, to be the person that has courage and has a spiritual backbone. I wonder how many opportunities we're missing to be the one that brings in grace into a situation. I wonder how many opportunities we're missing to bring life to a situation. But we're missing it because we're asleep spiritually. Oh, we're awake physically. We're recreating, procreating, doing deals and dying. We got that on lockdown. We, can know, we know how to do that. We're awake physically. And it's the physical that drives us. And you're physical beings, I get it. But when you become a Christ follower, there should be a role reversal and you should be awakened spiritually and allow the spiritual to drive the physical, not the physical driving the spiritual. You are a spiritual being with a physical body. The tent that you are now wearing someday will be folded up and placed in the ground. But your soul, your spirit will live on forever. So let's prioritize the spiritual things and wake up. We're asleep. And when we're asleep, what the enemy does is he sows tears or he sows weeds into where we have sowed good seed. This is what happens. Jesus gives this parable that the good man went and he sowed good seed in the evening when his men should have been watching, they were what? They were asleep. And while they were asleep, the enemy came and sowed tares, sowed weeds into the wheat, weeds into the good things. And when you are asleep spiritually, there are things that you've sown into your life, into your kid's life that's good seed. But if you fall asleep spiritually speaking, the enemy can come in and he will come in 
and it'll sow bad seed where you've sowed good seed. And then all of a sudden when it's harvest time, the good is with the bad and it's hard to, to, to weed through it all. Let me just give you an example of this. Some of you, you've done such a great job early on with your kids and, and, and you've, you've monitored what they're taking in and, and you're very aware about what shows they watch and aware of what they read and, and what they're watching and who they're with. But for some reason, we lose our minds as parents when our kids get into junior high and middle school and high school and all of a sudden we are hands off on what they're looking at. And you have sowed good seeds into your kids. But now the enemy comes through, through social media, through what they listen through, what they watch, what, what they're around and who they're around. And just know that when you are asleep, and I know, man, those hard yards early on as a parent, right? <laughs> like you want to sleep then, right? But here you are now. And, and parents, we can't be asleep in the most pivotal moments in the times of our students' lives. We gotta wake up because the enemy's sowing bad seed. When we don't monitor ourselves as Christ followers, adults, grown men and women, when we don't monitor what we're watching, what we're listening to, what we're exposing ourselves to. What's, what's happening? It's not a legalistic thing. Y'all know me, I'm, I'm the furthest from legalistic. But we gotta understand that we allow just whatever to come into our lives and think, well, I'm grown and I can handle it and I'm mature. The enemy's sowing bad seed where you've sown good seed. When we don't have clear boundaries with the opposite sex, What's the enemy gonna do? He's gonna come in where you've had boundary after boundary after boundary and, and you've made it clear that I do this and I don't do that and you made it clear where the relationship lies but, but one moment, one minute, you let your guard down. You fall asleep when you should be awake and a flirt moves forward and some attention that he gives you makes you feel more confident as a woman, something maybe you haven't felt from your husband in a long time. And now all of a sudden you begin to put those boundaries down and the enemy comes sowing bad seed. Everywhere that you've sowed good seed, when we don't keep a short accounts with our friends, when people have wronged us and we don't have a conversation with them, when we don't stand up and have boundaries, the enemy comes and he sows. He sows tears into our wheat. I love the idea of minute men. Minute men and minute women. They were the elite of the militia. Most of them under the age of 25. They were ready in a minute's notice. They were known for their bravery, their passion, and their mo mobility. They were known to wake up in a minute. Wake up. It didn't have to be a long wake up, just wake up. Like, God is calling you today. God is calling me today to wake up in a minute. Yeah. Romans 13, 11, for salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. We have to be ready in a minute and ready for this minute. I'll take care of it tomorrow. No, this minute. Now is the time, right now, for us to wake up. If you're here today, if you're watching online, I believe God has you here to wake you up. To wake me up. Jesus said that he would come and he would return. And when he would return, he would come like a thief in the night. First Thessalonians 5 says this, but you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We're not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. It's time to wake up. It's not only time to wake up, follow me here. It's time to clean up. And this is where the message gets unpopular. It's not time to just wake up. 
It's time to clean up. It's time to get ready for the day. You don't roll out of bed looking like you just rolled out of bed and go to work. Well, some of you do. <laughs> you need to clean up. You need to get ready for your day. You need to put off the things that hinder you from the day. So the second thing is, it's time to clean up. It's time to clean up. Romans 13, 12, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as the daytime. Night and orgies. Drunkenness. Not in sexual immorality in sensuality, not in quarreling, in jealousy. The word picture here that Paul is giving, that this is a literal thing he's challenging them to. Who, again, who's he talking to? <laughs> he's telling a bunch of Christians, hey, stop having orgies. I would never. You have digital orgies. Drunkenness. Sexual immorality. We are shameless people. And then we're offended when someone says, you shouldn't be doing that. We're shameless privately. But when it's made public, who are you to judge me? No one's judging you, sister. No one's judging you at all. But wake up. I'm not one to judge. It's not my place to judge. But it's time to wake up. Quarreling and jealousy, strife and envy, wanting what others have, power hungry constantly unsatisfied and wanting more. Paul tells us to put off these things. Put them off, take them off, clean up, take them off. Some of you, again, new to your walk with Jesus, some of you have been walking with Jesus for a long time and you've put on some old clothes. You took them off and you put them back on. Take them off. Well, maybe tomorrow, no, today. Well, I've taken them off before and I end up just putting them back on, so I might as well leave them on. You're believing a lie. You're not what you've done. Get your identity right. Who you are and whose you are in Jesus. Put it off. Just determine today. You know what? I know I did it last night, but not today. I'm not going to do it today. God, give me the strength not to do it today. God, I put it off. I take it off. God, I want to put it on. But I, want, I know you want me to put it off. So God, give me the strength to put it off. It's time to clean up. And then when you clean up, when you take things off, God doesn't want you running around like a spiritual nudist. <laughs> now it's time to dress up, to put something on. And this is where it gets good. This is where it gets great. Because it's so then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the heart of what Paul is driving at. This is the heart of what Paul wants you to hear. Paul says to dress up in Jesus and not just Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he mentions all three intentionally because he wants you to put on intentionally three things. Put on the Lord as your master. When you wake up in the morning and you put off old things, you get dressed in the Lord and you say, Lord, today be my master. Be the one that helps me make decisions. Like tomorrow I pray that you would do this. You would just wake up and say, okay, God, I'm putting you on. I'm putting the Lord on today. I'm putting on the Lord and he will be the one that gives me direction. Not my insecurities, not my fears, not my past, not my peers, but the Lord who is 
is my master. I will put on the Lord. I will make him my master. I will submit to him even when I don't want to do what he wants me to do because he is my master. I do not have a say so. I do what the master tells me to do. God, you tell me to do it. I will do it. You say yes and I go to it. You say no and I walk away from it. God, be my master, Lord. I put on you as my master. But then he goes on and he says, now put on the Lord Jesus. He says, now Jesus as the Savior. Jesus, be my deliverer today. Jesus, deliver me from evil today. Jesus, protect me. Jesus, cleanse me. Jesus, keep me clean. Hello, somebody. I have a tendency and a propensity to go towards dirty things, right? Like, I want to put on the old things because the old things, y'all know there's nothing like a good pair of old blue jeans, they're just comfortable. They feel right. It's the same thing. I know, like I get it. Like old patterns and ways of dealing with things and, and coping mechanisms that we have. And, and, and we, got, we got to, at times, we got to walk away from what's comfortable and learn to be comforted by Christ. Let him be your savior. So you wake up and say, God, today I put you on as Christ, my deliverer. Deliver me. I'm not going to deliver me. You deliver me. I'm not going to get me out of this. You get me out of this. Be my deliverer. And then he says, put on Christ. Put on the King. Put on the Messiah. Jesus, be my dominion. I love that. Jesus, rule over me and Jesus, rule in me. I'm a son of the King. I have rights and I've got privileges as a son of the king. I put on Jesus and when I put on Jesus, that comes with rights and that comes with power and that comes with privileges that I have dominion here on earth, that I share an authority with my God. And so that I can say to the devil, devil, not today. No, it's not happening today. Yeah, I know, you got me yesterday. But today I'm putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my direction. He is my deliverer and he is my dominion. The Lord Jesus Christ. So when we go out, we put on Jesus. We put him on. Christ follower, you know that when when God looks down on you, he sees you clothed in the righteousness of Christ. You're clothed in righteousness. He sees you perfect. Christ has stood in your, as your replacement, your substitute. But there's a decision for you to make to put him on. To put him on as Lord. To put him on as Jesus, as the Christ. You got to take off and you got to put on. Jesus Christ is behind me. He's ahead of me. He's with me. He's, he's in me. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 14 and we'll end. And make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Make no provision. I've got some shirts that my dad gave me 28 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I hold on to them for sentimental reasons. But they're out of style. I'll probably need to hold them a little bit longer and they'll be back in style. <laughs> That's the way it works. Paul is saying is, Don't keep old clothes. Put them off. If you're tempted to cheat on your spouse, and you know that relationship is already too comfortable, cut it off. Cut it off. If you can't have a drink anytime without having to get drunk, cut it off. Pornography, if you, can't, if you can't hold your phone, 
and resist, put it off. Just make a decision. Just make a decision. I'm walking away from it. And then trust God. You see, where we get ourselves in trouble is like, let me figure this out. Okay, I'm gonna make a plan to cut this thing off. And the enemy goes, okay, I just make a plan. Just walk out of church today, deciding you'll do it tomorrow. Oh yeah, just please, please, please just think this does not, is not for you. Because he's talking about sex and pornography and dirty stuff. He's not talking to me. Oh, please, the enemy says to you, please believe that. I wonder what describes you most. Spiritually speaking, there's gonna be several things that come on the string. You, you make the decision. I'm nodding off spiritually. Is that you? I'm awake sometimes, but I'm struggling. I'm inconsistent. I'm not locked in. I'm not walking in my purpose. I'm not running my race. I'm on and off, on and off, not consistent, on and off. And I'm, I'm nodding. I'm nodding spiritually. I'm napping spiritually. I'm napping spiritually. I mean, I come to church on Sunday, but the rest of the days, I'm taking a little nap. I gave God my Sunday. The rest of the days are my day to do what I want. I'm napping spiritually. Are you asleep spiritually? Straight sleep. You're not leading in your household. You're not being the woman of God God called you to be and that you know that you are. You're not being the man of God that God called you to be. You're not the student that God's called you to be. Your sleep. And then finally, there's some of us that are just still dead spiritually. And this entire message was not to you. But there's an invitation for you to come alive spiritually today. But here's what I want, just by way of closing. Here's what I want to do. I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you an opportunity in front of everyone with eyes open. I just want to give you an opportunity to say, yeah, there's something in my life that, um, that I need to wake up to. There's a part of me in my life that is old clothes that I put back on. And today, I want to wake up. I want to take it off. And I'm going to put on Christ. Okay? Don't think about tomorrow. I want you to think right now. What do you sense God telling you? Okay, this is a faith family moment. And if, if you're one of those people, and I'll be the first, to say, I've got some old things that I need to take off in front of everybody. That's me. Anyone else? See, we're not so much different. But man, we have hope in Jesus. Come on, what are we doing right now? Putting on Jesus. Come on, just, just picture that. I put on the Lord. I put on the Lord right now. God, be my direction tomorrow. Put on Jesus today. 
be my master. I put on Christ today. Be my king. My dominion. My authority. God, I'm in awe of what you are doing in our lives. We are awake. God, you have our hearts. Will you direct us? Will you rule us? Will you reign through us? God, would you use us in this city to be minute men and minute women ready at a moment's notice? God, would you use us? Have our lives, God. Have this moment. I pray right now for boldness and courage. I pray for the ability to walk away from things that you never thought you could walk away from. God, I pray right now for the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on every single person standing up. Holy Spirit, fall. Receive the Holy Spirit today. Receive power from on high. Receive confidence in Jesus. You are an overcomer. You are made new. You are the righteousness of Christ. You are sons of the king, daughters of the king. Father, help us to walk in who we are and whose we are. And we pray this in Jesus' name.